हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल स्टार्ट विद द फेशियल शीथ ऑफ आईबॉल नाउ व्हेन यू विल हैव द ऑर्बिट एंड व्हेन यू विल ओपन द ऑर्बिट यू विल रियलाइज दैट इनसाइड द ऑर्बिट यू हैव द कवरिंग ऑफ पेरियोस्टियम यू हैव सम मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ द फेशिया सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस ऑल दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स इनसाइड द ऑर्बिट सो व्हाट यू आर गोइंग टू सी व्हेन यू विल हैव द ऑर्बिट so in the form of the fascia you will have discussion on the periorbita what do you mean by the periorbita then you will have one more term is known as tenon's capsule so we'll discuss about the tenon's capsule then you will have the check ligaments which are concerned with the medial and lateral rectus muscle and lastly we'll discuss about the suspensory ligament of lockwood so what is periorbita now the periorbita is also known as orbital fascia and it is literally meaning is the periosteum so when you will see any bone we know that bone is lined by the periosteum the periosteum of the orbital bones is known as periorbita so it is nothing but it is lining of the bones that form the orbit and it can easily stripped off from from the orbit it is continue at the margins of the orbit with the periosteum on outer surface of skull now here in this diagram you can see that this is the periosteum now this periosteum is the inner lining of the bones which are forming the orbit now at the margin this is coming out and then it will continue with the periosteum on the outer side and here through this gap it will continue with the periosteum on inner side of the skull which is known as endosteal layer of dura mater so it is very simple to keep in mind that what is periorbita or orbital fascia it is nothing but it is a another name of the periosteum and it continues at the margins of the orbit with the periosteum on the outer side of skull at the various opening where the orbit communicate with the cranial cavity the periorbita is continue with the periosteal layer of your dura mater which i already told you that when you will have the dura inside the cranial cavity you have the two types of the dura meningeal dura and endosteal dura and that endosteal dura is nothing but that is also the periosteum periosteum so you can see that this periosteum of in, uh, inner side of the cranial cavity continue with this periosteum of the orbit then you will have the some modification of this periorbita or orbital fascia so what are these modification you should know first is known as orbital septum second modification is known as lacrimal fascia third modification is known as fibrous pulley and the fourth modification is known as common tendinous ring of zin so these are the four important modification of the inner lining of your orbit that is we are talking about the periosteum so what is orbital septum now it also this uh, periosteum also sends some extension into the upper and lower eyelids now here you can see that this is the extension now this extensions are going into the upper and lower eyelids and these extensions are known as orbital septum so what is orbital septum orbital septum is nothing but it is a extension of the periosteum into the upper and lower eyelid second is the lacrimal fascia now lacrimal fascia covers the lateral surface of lacrimal sac now when you will see this diagram in this diagram you can see that this is the lacrimal sac now you know that lacrimal sac is a part of the lacrimal apparatus and if you will take the section of the orbit in the horizontal plane you can see that this is the lacrimal sac now this sac lies between the anterior and posterior lacrimal crest and this is the fascia which is covering the lateral surface of lacrimal sac so where is the lateral surface this is the lateral surface which is covered by this layer of periosteum or periorbita so when you are reading the modification you will have the lacrimal fascia which covers the lateral surface of lacrimal sac 
Then the next modification comes is the fibrous pulley. This fibrous pulley is present in this trochlear fovea. Now this trochlear space which is a depression on the medial side of the roof of orbit is having a small fibrocartilaginous pulley. That pulley is actually formed by the modification of periorbita or periosteum of orbit. Then you will have the last modification is known as common tendinous ring of zin. So in the posterior part of the orbit, so this is the important thing near the apex when you will see the posterior part, there is a thickening around the optic canal and the central part of the superior orbital fissure. So this ring of zin enclosed the two structure, one is the optic canal, second is the central portion of the superior orbital fissure. Now this is the point of origin of all the four rectus muscle and this area is known as common tendinous ring of zin. So in this diagram you can see that this is the optic canal and this is the central part of the superior orbital fissure. This is the lateral part of the superior orbital fissure. So in between you can see that there is a ring and this ring is nothing but it is a modification of the periosteum and it is known as ring of zin which will give origin to all your four rectus muscle. Now here also you can see that this is the ring of zin and from there you have the origin of your all the four recti of eyeball. Then we have the next part of the facial sheath of the orbit that is tenon's capsule. Now this tenon's capsule is also known as fascia bulbae or bulbar fascia of eyeball. Now this bulbar fascia or tenon's capsule of the eyeball is a facial sheath. So this is the first question. What do you mean by tenon's capsule? It is a facial sheath or facial covering of eyeball. It is not the covering of orbit. It is eyeball. While we have seen the periorbita, periorbita is a inner lining of orbit that means the periosteum which is lining the orbital bones. While what is the tenon's capsule? Tenon's capsule is a facial covering uh, around the eyeball. So this is a layer of the fascia that encloses the eyeball and it remains separated from the eyeball by the orbital fat and that gap where you have the orbital fat is known as episcleral space. Now in this diagram when you will see that there is a eyeball and this is this eyeball is covered by a layer. Now where is that layer? Now the layer is present here. Now this is the layer. Now this layer is known as your tenon's capsule. Clear? Now this is actually your periorbita. So you have to first keep in mind the position of different facial covering. So this is what? This is the periorbita or it is the periosteum. So this is the periorbita. But this is your facial sheath covering we are talking about that is the your tenon's capsule. So it encloses this whole eyeball but there are few important uh, features which you should know because this capsule is uh, or you can say the facial sheath is not complete anteriorly it is not complete posterior also you will have some defects in this sheath that we will discuss. So this fascia allow free movements of the eyeball in the facial socket. So this is the important function of this tenon's capsule that it make a facial uh, socket and inside this facial socket this eyeball is going to move. So for the movement of the eyeball inside the socket, you need the extraocular muscles, those will go and insert into the eyeball. So what will happen that this fascia is going to puncture by the recti or oblique muscles. So it extends from the optic nerve posteriorly to the corneoscleral junction anteriorly. I just told you that this fascia is not a complete ball or complete fascia. It is deficient at two places. One you can see that posteriorly it starts from the margins of the attachment of optic nerve and anteriorly it will reach up to the limbus. What is limbus? Limbus is your corneoscleral junction. So this is your cornea. Now here is the cornea and the cornea is meeting with the sclera and this is known as corneoscleral junction. So your this 
tenon's capsule is anteriorly extend only up to this line and this line is known as corneoscleral junction then anteriorly it is firmly attached to the sclera near the edge of the cornea behind the corneoscleral junction which i just told you second thing is posteriorly the sh this sheath or the tenon's capsule pierced by the ciliary arteries vessels and the some nerves so posteriorly what are the structures pierces this capsule posteriorly it is pierced by the optic nerve which is a major structure apart from the uh, this uh, uh, optic now you will have the short and long ciliary nerves and some ciliary vessels posteriorly it is firmly attached to the sclera around the point of the entrance of optic nerve into the eyeball now this is the important thing which you have to understand that this point is the area where you can see that the optic nerve is forming and the, it, the fibers are coming out from the eyeball now at this point what will happen that this fascia which is known as tenon's capsule merge with the sclera and also continue with this outer layer of your optic nerve so this is the same thing is written that it is firmly attached to the sclera around the point of the entrance of the optic nerve into the eyeball the facial sheath attached to the dura around the optic nerve as its attachment to the eye so in the posterior part when you are talking about the uh, tenon's capsule what is the attachment of the tenon's capsule posteriorly at two point one point is with the sclera at what point uh, what is the uh, area of this the area is circumference of the exit of optic nerve second it will continue on the optic nerve and merge with the dural sheath which is the outer layer of optic nerve then Additionally, the facial sheath pierced by the tendon of four rectus and two oblique muscle. I just told you that this capsule is working like a facial socket and inside the socket, the eyeball is going to move. So if you want to move the eyeball inside the socket, then you need the muscles, those will go and attach to the eyeball. So for that, these muscle has to puncture the facial sheath or the tenon's capsule at different places. As the muscle approaches the eyeball, the investing fascia surrounding each muscle blend with the facial sheath of the eyeball to the point of attachment. What does it mean? That there are two sets of the fascia. One fascia is the investing fascia. That is actually the outer layer of the muscle. Second layer is the facial sheath of the eyeball. So what will happen that suppose this is the point of your uh, puncture. Now this is one muscle, now this muscle is coming and approaching towards the eyeball and ultimately it is going to insert in this part of the sclera. Now here you can see that the muscle ultimately attaches to the eyeball. Now there are two sets of your fascia. Now this is the outer fascia. Now this outer fascia is nothing but it is a outer covering of the muscle. Second thing is that there is a tenon's capsule. So this is the tenon's capsule or we should say this is your outer layer or facial sheath of eyeball. Now this facial sheath of eyeball continue on this muscular uh, outer layer like a sleeve. So there is a continuity occurs between the facial sheath of eyeball and investing layer of muscle. So the sheath is reflected as a sleeve proximally around each tendon. So now what you are able to understand that once the muscles are approaching towards the eyeball, these muscles are going to puncture the tenon's capsule. At the site of the puncture of the tenon's capsule, this tenon's capsule reflect on the muscle like a sleeve. And this is the important thing and it is helping to hold the muscle around the eyeball. Now there is a specialized modification of this tenon's capsule or the fascia of eyeball and that is known as suspensory ligament of Lockwood. So what is suspensory ligament of Lockwood? So it is a specialized modification of the facial sheath of eyeball. So this is the first question. Right now we learn the two term, one is periorbita, second is the tenon's capsule. Now the question comes is that suspensory ligament of Lockwood is a modification of periorbita 
or it is a modification of facial sheath or tenon's capsule answer is it is a modification of facial sheath not periorbita it supports the eyeball in the lower part this is the another question that whenever you are having the suspensory ligament of log board it is always a feature in the lower aspect of eyeball not in the upper part so what are the contributions to form this suspensory ligament of logwood so first contribution is the facial sheath of the eyeball that is the main part which is going to form your suspensory ligament apart from that you will have the facial sleeve, sleeve of the two inferior muscles now what are the name of these two inferior muscles one is known as inferior rectus another is known as inferior oblique and also you have the contribution from the medial and lateral ocular muscles which are going to form your medial and lateral check ligaments so all these structures is going to form the suspensory ligament of lockwood so how this ligament is formed the facial sleeve of the inferior rectus now the first thing is you should always keep in mind that whenever we are talking about the formation of ligament of logwood you will have only the two names in your mind inferior rectus and inferior oblique so the facial sleeve of inferior rectus thickened on its underside and blend with the sleeve of inferior oblique so here you can see that this is the inferior rectus muscle below the inferior rectus you will have inferior oblique muscle now the facial sleeve which is present in between them which is here now this is the facial sleeve so the facial sleeve of the inferior rectus thickened on its underside and blend with the sleeve of inferior oblique so because of this pattern now these two muscles are enclosed in a thick sleeve of fascia so this is the one and most important thing second thing is it also get attached with the check ligament now this fascia is continue laterally and medially on both the side and there is a modification of the sleeves on the medial and lateral muscles which are known as check ligaments which are the triangular modification these are formation there is a formation of hammock like support for the eye so now you can see that this is a hammock and this hammock is making a sling and this sling is supporting the eye from the lower side so this hammock is now termed as suspensory ligament of lockwood so if the suspensory ligament remains intact when the floor of orbit is fractured or the maxilla removed surgically the eye does not sag so this is the question of your exam that we know the floor is mainly majorly contributed by the maxillary bone so suppose somebody is doing some surgery on the maxilla and if i remove the maxilla then the question comes is the eyeball remain its own position or fall down answer is that it remains in own position because in the lower part it is supported by this sling like structure or the hammock like structure which is known as suspensory ligament of lockwood once you will cut the suspensory ligament of lockwood then and then this eyeball will fall down after removing of maxilla now the next comes is what do you mean by check ligaments so check ligaments are nothing but these are the triangular expansions of the investing fascia covering the medial and lateral rectus muscle so how many check ligaments are there check ligament is a paired structure so you will have the right and left check ligaments which are modification of the fascia covering the lateral and medial rectus muscle these attach to the medial and lateral wall of the bony orbit now the medial check ligament this medial check ligament attached posterior to the posterior lacrimal crest of your lacrimal bone so the question comes is where is the attachment of medial check ligament answer is lacrimal bone while when you will see the lateral check ligament lateral check ligament get its attachment to the zygomatic bone and the point of attachment of zygomatic bone is known as zygomatic orbital tubercle or it is known as witness tubercle so the function of these check ligaments the positioning of these ligament seems to restrict the medial and lateral rectus muscle now in this diagram you can see that this is the ligament on the lateral side this is known as lateral check ligament and this point is known as witness tubercle which is a part of zygomatic bone 
while this is the medial check ligament and this medial check ligament is going to attach to this lacrimal crest behind this lacrimal crest and you have to understand that I just told you that there is a lacrimal sac and this lacrimal sac laterally covered by this modification of periorbita which is known as lacrimal fascia. So when you are reading the check ligament it is nothing but these are the two triangular modifications of the fascia or investing layer which is covering your medial and lateral rectus muscle. So at the end of this class of the facial covering facial sheets of the orbit and eyeball you have to remember four names which are most basic thing. First is what do you mean by the periorbita? What do you mean by the tenons capsule? What is suspensory ligament of Lockwood? And what do you mean by a check ligaments? The second important thing is that whenever you are talking about the movements of eyeball, the eyeball is moving inside the facial socket which is formed by the tenons capsule. And tenons capsule is present inside the orbit and inner line of orbit is known as periorbita which is actually the periosteum of the bones of orbit. So this is all about today's lecture. Thank you.